evening, detectives. You ever notice how these days, nothing's off the table? A few years back, the idea of seeing a main hero like Batman drop into a spin-off series? Laughable. But now, we're in a whole new world where the suits at the studios have figured something out. They've realized that they can stir up a frenzy, keep us guessing, and most importantly, break the internet with one well-placed move. And let's face it, despite all the talk, all the denials from Matt Reeves and the showrunner, there's still that lingering feeling in the pit of my gut. We're gonna see the bat in the Penguin series. Look, I've seen this game before. They tell us, no, he's not showing up. But that's exactly how they play it when they want us to keep our eyes peeled. It's like how the Mandalorian, spoilers for the season two finale, pulled the ultimate trick, having Luke Skywalker swoop in out of nowhere like some last-minute gunslinger saving the day when the main crew was backed into a corner, they couldn't escape. That kind of twist, that's what the audience lives for. And it does nothing but help to promote the studio's properties. It's not about spoiling the surprise, it's about making sure we're hooked. And when it finally happens, it's like the city's lights flicker, and everything changes in an instant. That is why, despite what the studios are saying, I've come up with five different ways in which the Batman could show up in the Penguins Limited series. By the way, here's what the showrunner for the series, Lauren LaFranc, had to say in a recent interview over at comicbookmovie.com. It's interesting because Matt Reeves and I always talked about the fact that, in truth, his version of Gotham City is very grounded. Batman's not everywhere, she tells Cinema Blend. It's a big city, and also it has been established in the film that he doesn't really pay much attention to Oz. He doesn't think he's really worth paying attention to in that regard. And so honestly, we didn't really think in terms of this idea that Batman would be watching. We were just really more focused on following our characters on our show. The article's writer then goes on to say, While we're sure Oz would disagree, this does make sense, and the Batman Farrell's take on the classic DC Comics villain is not really taken very seriously by Bruce Wayne, Jim Gordon, and most of the criminal associates, which is why the Penguin will focus on the character rising through the ranks as he attempts to prove himself as someone they should never have underestimated. And I completely agree with that statement. I'll be posting a link in the description if you'd like to read the whole article for yourself. Before we get into how Batman could be in this movie, let's do a quick recap of Oz's story and Matt Reeves' The Batman. In The Batman, Oswald the Penguin Cobblepot, portrayed by Colin Farrell, operates as a key figure within Gotham's criminal underworld. Though he's not yet the infamous Kingpin we know from the comics, instead, Penguin is Falcone's lieutenant, running the Iceberg Lounge, a hotspot for the city's corrupt elite. His role, while seemingly secondary at first, is critical in the unfolding investigation. Early in the movie, Batman and Lieutenant Gordon approach the Penguin at his nightclub after discovering a connection between the murdered mayor, Don Mitchell Jr., and the Iceberg Lounge. Penguin plays it cool, feigning ignorance about Mitchell's affair with Anika Kozolov, the missing woman who was tied to the case. Despite his gruff demeanor and shady dealings, Oz tries to appear as a mere club owner, staying in the shadows of Falcone's greater power. However, Batman doesn't buy it. When Coulson is abducted and killed by the Riddler, all signs point to the Penguin being involved in Gotham's dirty dealings. Batman and Gordon track him to a drug deal, leading to a spectacular car chase that highlights Penguin's resourcefulness and willingness to go to any lengths to survive. Despite the pursuit, Batman eventually captures him, only to realize that Oz isn't the informant they were after, turning the spotlight back onto Falcone. As the Riddler's killing spree escalates and Falcone's secrets unravel, Penguin's role becomes more prominent. We see the power dynamic shift as Falcone is exposed as the real informant behind the historic Moroni drug bust, and the Riddler takes Falcone's life in front of the Penguin and the police. This moment is pivotal for Oz. While he didn't pull the trigger, he knows the opportunity it presents. With Falcone dead, a major player in Gotham's underworld is removed, leaving a power vacuum that Penguin seems all too eager to fill. In the film's final moments, Penguin is shown overlooking Gotham's flooded, chaotic streets. With Falcone gone and Gotham's future uncertain, Penguin's eyes light up with ambition. He knows this is his moment. He's no longer just Falcone's right-hand man. The city is ripe for the taking and Oz is ready to make his move, setting the stage for his eventual rise to power. In The Batman, Penguin plays a layered role. He isn't the main villain, but his cunning, survival, instincts, and ambitions are unmistakable. The film teases the beginning of his transformation from the lieutenant to the crime lord we all know, leaving us fans eagerly awaiting what's next for Oswald Cobblepot. 
So that wraps up the synopsis of Oz's role in the film, but to understand where we'll see the penguin at in the show, I think we have to look at Oz's final major scene in the movie right before Falcone is murdered. All throughout the movie, you can feel the tension between Oz and Falcone coming to a boil. Falcone's always been the top dog, and he's not shy about reminding Cobblepot of his place in the food chain. You can see the frustration simmering on Oz's cool exterior, the kind of anger that builds up over years of being dismissed. When Oz learns that Falcone's the rat, the real informant, he finally snaps. He levels a cold threat at his old boss. Enjoy your last night at Blackgate, because it's going to be your last. It's not a warning, it's a promise. But Falcone, he just laughs. He doesn't take Oz seriously. He never did. Falcone leans in, taunting him, asking if Oz thinks he's a big man now. And Oz, with a mixture of defiance and doubt, spits back. Maybe I am. But Falcone doesn't let up. He cuts Oz down with words, calling him a nobody in an empty suit. The insult digs deep. And you see it in Oz's eyes, the flash of rage, the desperate need to prove himself. He pulls his gun, fingers itching for retribution, but before he can pull the trigger, the shot comes out from somewhere else. Falcone drops, but it's not Oz who's taken him out. It's the Riddler's game, and Falcone was just another pawn. As Gotham drowns in chaos, the National Guard's coming, and martial law is in effect. But even Batman knows the criminal element doesn't sleep. The camera cuts to Oz, standing amidst the wreckage, the city in disarray. Gotham's about to tear itself apart. And Oz? He's already eyeing the pieces. As Batman narrates at the end of the film, looting, lawlessness, the city's ripe for the taking. You can almost hear Oz thinking of how he is going to take over, even as it's the Batman's voice we hear on screen. This is his moment, his time to seize power to step out of Falcone's shadow and become the boss of his own empire. Funny thing is, the whole show about Oz was almost going to be a plot for the second Batman film. Instead, we get to see this all play out in his own series. A slow burn rise to power, weaving through the cracks of Gotham's corruption. That's the beauty of a spinoff. We get to explore the dark alleys of these characters without needing a whole movie to do it. And with the next Batman film not dropping until 2026, this show is going to be a fix we need to stay hooked on Gotham's twisted game until the next chapter unfolds. So, now that we know where Oz is at at the end of the film and before the show starts, let's focus on five ways in which the Batman could appear or make his presence known in the film. First, a shadowy presence. Batman could remain in the periphery, not fully appearing but casting his influence over Gotham. We might see brief glimpses of him from afar, his shadow on a rooftop, reminding both the audience and Oswald Cobblepot that Gotham's protector is always watching. This approach would keep Batman out of the direct storyline while subtly maintaining his presence in the show. Next, number two, we could see a newspaper headline or news report. Bruce Wayne and his Batman persona could be referenced indirectly through Gotham's media. An episode could feature a Gotham News Channel reporting on a Batman sighting or a recent takedown of a small crime criminal. This would allow Batman to feel like he's still active in the city without directly interacting with Penguin or other characters. A brief clip in the news report in the background could tease his ongoing battle for Gotham. Number three, we could have an encounter with Selina Kyle. If Selina Kyle, aka Catwoman, makes a surprise appearance in this series, Despite her seemingly leaving the city at the end of the film, she could mention a recent run-in with the Batman. She might even taunt Penguin about how the Bat still isn't paying attention to him. Or drop a subtle line about her last interaction with the Cape Crusader. It would be a natural way to acknowledge Batman's presence without needing him to physically appear on screen. And number four, we could get a Bruce Wayne cameo. Instead of appearing as Batman, Robert Pattinson could show up as Bruce Wayne. In this scenario, Bruce is keeping tabs on Gotham's power shifts, perhaps meeting with Penguin in his club under the guise of a civilian visit. The tension between him would be palpable, with viewers knowing who Bruce really is while Penguin underestimates him. This way, Pattinson's Bruce Wayne would subtly exert his influence without donning the Batsuit, staying true to the showrunner's goal of keeping Batman out of the storyline. And then number five, and finally, we have a post-credits tease. The final episode of The Penguin could feature a post-credits scene where Bruce Wayne, as Batman, is hinted at for a future showdown. Imagine a silhouette of the Batmobile, or Bruce Wayne brooding in the Batcave, reviewing surveillance of Penguin's recent rise in power. 
It wouldn't interfere with the main storyline, but would serve as a tantalizing tease for his involvement in the Batman 2. Those are my ideas, folks. Now it's time for me to ask you some questions. Out of the five possibilities I mentioned, which one do you think is the most likely way Batman could show up in the Penguin series, and why? Do you think Batman's presence in the Penguin series would enhance the story or overshadow it? How do you think they should handle his role if he does appear? Would you prefer Batman to appear in his full glory, or just as Bruce Wayne in the shadows? If Batman doesn't show up at all, do you think the Penguin series can still hold up on its own? What would make the series stand out without him? Well, detectives, that's the case laid out in front of us. Five possibilities, five ways the Bat could swoop into the Penguin and change the game. But whether he shows up or not, Gotham streets will always be slick with power plays, corruption, and shadows that reach just a little too long. And that's where the real story lies, isn't it? Now, if you've got your own theories, or you think I missed something, go ahead, drop your thoughts in the comments. And remember, to stay ahead of the game in this city, you gotta like this video, hit the subscribe button, and ring the bell. Otherwise, you'll be left chasing the clues long after the case has gone cold. Until next time, keep your eyes on the streets, and stay sharp.